live in America. That's right. Where we have Jesus, not like you cellular, vaguely Gallic freaks up here. In America, we believe in God. That's why we don't like to pay a lot for gas. We're paying a lot for gas. We're not happy about it. We shouldn't have to pay a lot for gas because Jesus doesn't want us to pay a lot for gas in America. <laughs> We're supposed to have everything we want in America. People say, why don't you just drive smaller cars? Why don't you economize? We can't. We can't do it. We can't drive smaller cars because we have big, fat kids. You can't do it. You try wedging a clan of these mid-American behemoths with their Cheetos and their Funyuns and their Game Boys. You, you try wedging them in the back seat of a Honda Civic, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> you go to Asia, they got 12 little bastards on, on, on a moped, for Christ's sake. You know, in America, we need a Greyhound bus just to haul two little fat to soccer practice. <laughs> we're, a, we're a lucky, spoiled, and gluttonous country. I was in a restaurant recently, the waitress says, hey, did you leave any room for dessert? Did you leave any room for dessert? Did you leave any room for dessert? How gluttonous a concept is that? Did you leave any room? Is there more space in your fat, distended, bloated body cavity for more? Any chance we could put more in there? Is there any room, any space? Is there any possibility for more being crammed in your fat head? Any chance at all, any room? We got dudes with plungers that'll come out and cram food in your bloated esophagus. Is there any room for dessert? How about some death by chocolate? Can I interest anyone in some death by chocolate? Death by chocolate. Death by chocolate. How spoiled do you have to be as a culture to trivialize death like that? And let's face it, it's not gonna stop anytime soon because nobody exercises, nobody moves, everything's automated, remote control. All we do is sit around and type on the keyboard and in a few thousand years we're gonna evolve to the point where we don't even need limbs, we're just gonna be a big fat ass with fingers. <laughs> I'm trying to say that Jesus loves us <laughs> as Americans. It's not that I don't believe in God. I think there's got to be some sort of God out there. Even if you believe in the Big Bang Theory, you could still see that there's some intelligent design behind it. I mean, scientists have pretty much proven that if there had been a one quadrillionth percentage difference in either direction in temperature or velocity, that the universe would have never formed after the Big Bang. It would have collapsed back in on itself or expanded infinitely outwards, which proves beyond a doubt that I once read an article I didn't understand and, <laughs> you know, memorized a little part of it. But well, we have moral values in America, not like up here. <laughs> you have no values. You have no Jesus. You're, you're in your gay marriage. Same sex marriage is the law of the land. What kind of country makes it the law of the land that you gotta marry someone in your same sex? Are you, are you people trying to kill God? <laughs> well, Gay marriage thing, I'll tell you that. George Bush says two gay people getting married would violate the sanctity of marriage. The sanctity of marriage. The sanctity. Is anybody here married? <laughs> Does it feel like a gift from God to you? <laughs> sanctity of marriage. You, get, you can get married in Vegas at five o'clock in the morning to some toothless crack whore you met 15 minutes ago. Not, not only do I think gay people should be allowed to get married, I think they should have to get married because I'm a little tired of their happy-go-lucky lifestyles. <laughs> they, they should have to suffer like everybody else. I'm, I'm sick of walking by these sidewalk cafes. You see these guys sitting there, they're all tan and fit and muscular. They're like 60 years old, but they look great because they don't have someone at home sucking the will to live right out of them. <laughs> and, and it, if you had to be married, being married to a guy would be great. <laughs> Could you imagine saying something and having the words you said interpreted exactly the way that you intended your words to be interpreted? <laughs> that would be a nice touch, wouldn't it? Remember what you said 10 years ago when we were driving in the car on the way to my mother's house? No. Oh, me neither. I'm a dude. Forget it. Never mind. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was about to torture you with some fake transcription skills that I knew you couldn't really call me on, and then I was going to punish you for not remembering something that you actually never did in the first place, but instead, since I'm a dude, I'll just shut up, we can drive along, maybe listen to music, have a good afternoon after all. <laughs> Being married to a guy would be great. I, I didn't even used to believe in, in, in soulmates, the whole concept of soulmates, I never believed in soulmates, until I saw Siegfried and Roy. Because <laughs> there you got a gay lion tamer who hooked up with another gay lion tamer. What are the odds of that happening? Talk about holding out for Mr. Right. That seems like a pretty beautiful story. <laughs> People say they can't find someone who shares their interests. Two German dudes play with tigers in the middle of the desert. That doesn't seem vaguely biblical to anybody else. <laughs> All right.
Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. Thanks a lot. They all say the same thing. Add one to three inches. It's always one to three inches. What about something for a guy like me? Who just needs a quarter of an inch? Literally, I've got one of the biggest faces. It's like the moon. I'm probably affecting your menstrual cycle just being this close. <laughs> <laughs>